Uh, greetings and welcome to the Pan-African Focus channel. I hope wherever you are in the Pan-African world, the ancestors will bless and guide you. Today in the studio, I have with me the first scientist who is the author of the Black Scientist and Inventor series of books. So now, uh, first scientist, so could you just give us a brief um, background about yourself? First of all, I'd like to say thank you, Brother Tahaka, for inviting me here today um, on uh, this uh, live link presentation. Um, really, just to give you a little background, um, I was educated in the UK and um, one of the things I noticed coming through uh, the education system over here from primary, secondary to tertiary education was that I learned very little, if anything, about any positive contributions that people of African descent have made uh, to this world. That said, um, I often learn of the many uh, negative things um, that African people of African descent supposedly um, had been involved in, in terms of um, their place uh, on on this earth and this world. Um, there was very little information from schools, um, as I, I just said. Uh, telling us about anything uh, positive and so I often wondered is this really true or, or not even though you know I'm a child going through school and they're teaching me these things I'm thinking surely if all these other groups of people have contributed uh, something of substance and something that you know that their names are now etched um, in stone and various other places and we're learning about these particular people surely people who looked like me had also um, made some uh, major contributions so later on as a um, older teenager young adult uh, I was fortunate to um, come across uh, some information um, in that regard um, showing uh, some great positive contributions um, uh, people of African descent have made. The really good thing at the time was there was uh, literature that was coming over from the state and it was uh, at the time mainly about the African, African American contributions that um, had been made and of course at the time that was a godsend um, to, to learn of this um you know because oftentimes if you just uh, watched the, the tv or listened to the radio or read um the media um the print print media you would know of the great um sportsmen um of african descent or the great um musicians of african descent but outside of that you wouldn't know of any great things that people of African descent have uh, contributed. Um, I was often interested in the sciences and engineering and I, I, I chose to um, study that um, later on. And I, all the people I learned about um, and I studied about were not African, they were in the majority European and maybe one or two may have been Asian but um, on a whole generally European and no Africans. Now why is this important? I said to myself looking at school <clears throat> for example Brother Tahaka I don't mm -hmm. know cast your mind back a bit now at <laughs> school even in mathematics you, know, you look at mathematics and most people, um, whether they can do it or not, um, have heard of 
Pythagoras' theorem. That's it. That's the one. Pythagoras straight away. Yeah. Yeah, and then you um, got physics, Archimedes, uh, the Archimedes principle. That's another one that jumps to mind. Of non-European. Then of course you got Isaac Newton and so forth and you know so even i found i when i was looking at certain courses in schools i found that hang on a minute even if you're learning maths you're learning physics biology chemistry you're still learning about history because mm -hmm. they're teaching you um supposedly where um these form you know these great formulas that we use you know today to solve particular problems where and who they came from and you also learn in geography in a geo geographical location of um, you know where these people were mm -hmm. and none of them i could find were based in africa uh, um and none of them uh were africans that's true just in case are you still there yeah 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 i'm still here yeah i can hear you yeah, carry disappeared on. for a moment okay are you still there brother Tarka? i'm still here yeah can you hear me i can hear so you I fine found that none of I found that, um, you know, uh, all these people who so-called um, invented particular formulas and so forth, um, none of them were of African descent. And I thought, hang on a minute, even though we're learning this, these, math these mathematical principles and scientific Hello? 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 Yeah, I can see you and hear you. Yeah. Okay, okay. Because I thought I thought you had dropped out for a moment because he was speaking and then it suddenly cut off. Okay. I'm not sure which bit I cut off at, but we mm -hmm. probably can carry on. Yeah, yeah, you can just carry on. Because you were saying about the in schools, you know, none of the um figures that came up in especially mathematics and the scientists none of them was african and as uh you know mathematics and stuff also relate to history you found that very very strange uh, yeah absolutely so whether we like it or not we are learning history and, and you know and people who think they don't um you know history is not important and so forth in one sense, a little bit deluded because you, you're actually learning it, whether mm -hmm. you're doing maths, English, geography, you know, as I said, all the sciences, physics, um, chemistry, biology, it's there. The problem is you're only learning one side of history, a particular history mm -hmm. that right. um, that particular teacher wants you to learn and um, missing out other aspects mm -hmm. of history. So, that was one of the reasons I wanted to look and in particular look at the contributions within history uh, that people of African descent have made to all areas of STEM. Um, STEM, for those who don't know, just simply means science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Um, so that was the area I, you know, I um, concentrated on. And as I think I was alluding to it earlier, uh, it was um, in the past a good thing that the information or the only information, certainly that I had access to at mm -hmm. the time, was um, literature that was coming over from African-Americans. That's right. Um, and they had, you know, 
had looked at in particular the contributions that African Americans had made. And as I said, I was interested in that STEM area. So I could find that, um, you know, they had been documenting the, um, the, the, the contributions that African Americans had ma made in all areas of STEM. Now, um, although that was empowering, in, in fact, at the time, extremely empowering, still is today, um, I had also noted that uh, many of the people of African descent here in the UK um, had parentage either from the Caribbean or directly from Africa. And so I felt it important that I needed to look at, okay, what were the contributions that people of the Caribbean had made in STEM and people from Africa? And of course, those of us now that were growing mm -hmm. up here in the UK, um, that didn't mean that I was going to miss out the African-American contribution because that was ex also extremely important. Yeah, so true. where my research, I guess, differed for many of the time of that time was that I was looking across the board rather than just looking here in the UK or just looking at African-Americans or just looking at people from the Caribbean or just looking at Africa. I, I wanted to look at all of the whole spectrum where that was concerned and then put that um, that information in mm -hmm. some form of pu publication. Okay, yeah. yeah, that's, well, to me that's, because um, I remember clearly, um, like I said, a lot of literature coming over from the States. And I remember a particular book that I came across at one point that really opened my eyes to the various contribution and it was by the writer Ivan Sertima, Blacks in Science. Right, yes, yes, and that book I remember well. That's it, straight away it woke you up and you know you start to feel a bit, you know you start to feel proud that wow, black people did con make major contribution and of course like you um, referred to earlier, when you go right back now because in mathematics, one of the first things you learn, you know, when you started in this country, you know, you would at that time was O levels, which later became GCSEs, it's Pythagoras theorem. You know, and then of course you had Archimedes and so forth, but what they weren't saying was where Pythagoras learned that from. And it's in reading books like Destruction of Black Civilization by Chancellor Williams and Stone and Legacy by George Jim James that it brought to mind that those great Greek philosophers actually was taught by Africans in Kemet. So then that started to put a whole new perspective on things. And then, as they say, the genie was out the back buckle and the black people started to approach life in a much um, a different way. So back to you now. So what, so at which point, at this point, as you say, you was noticing certain things. So at what point you, did you decide that, right, it's time for me to start actually putting this together in book form? And I remember your books that came out they were especially targeted at children. And why so children? I mean, what's important in terms of targeting that material at children? Well, to tell you the truth, initially, um, the publications in terms of the research that I was doing with, in Black mm -hmm. Science and Defenders was initially targeted to everyone, okay. uh, adult and children. If you remember in the early days, um, with biz, we, we actually were f um, producing posters of uh, uh, black scientists and inventors and then laminate uh, prints of black scientists and inventors and then we went into calendars of uh, black scientists and, uh, and inventors and of course they proved to be you know very popular at the time but I, I remember you know um, being invited into some schools at a time just based on these posters laminates and calendars and speaking to the children and i'd realized that hang on a minute they're 
they were basically being taught the same stuff that had been taught in terms of you know uh, african history started with enslavement of you know african people and by the way you should be quite happy that you were enslaved um and you know three four hundred years ago uh you guys were um swinging in the trees and um you know in basically living in a barbaric state so you're happy and you should feel happy that we took you out of that state and brought you into some form of civilization so that sort of nonsense was still going on um and you know as i said the positive contributions that we made and the truth of you know what we really did come from wasn't being taught so i thought you know it probably it better that i take this information off a poster from a calendar you know that's just one year and put it in book form it would have a longer life right. and i will target it towards young people in that i'd write it in such a way that it's palatable enough for a young person to understand but you know what i'll still make the books interesting enough for adults to adults also want to, want to read right. because when i went in the schools and i was um teaching young people about this information i found that 99 percent of the teachers hadn't a clue of what i was talking about <laughs> <laughs> so um i knew that um also this was uh, educational material for adults at the same mm, time as um, educating the, you know the children where this was concerned mm. and so that's so, what so, so just one interesting things you said nine, obviously 99 percent of the teachers is like what's going on here so how were they i mean did they take it like oh it's, it's something interesting that we never knew and we are keen to find out or was there hostility? Like here's somebody coming and overturning everything we are about. So just 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 how did the teachers take it? Um, to tell you the truth, it's it's an interesting one. Of course, when you're invited into a school um, to give a presentation, um, it's certainly on a subject matter like this, it's generally quite difficult to get in there in the first place so if you manage to get in there then um whoever is inviting you is not that hostile um to what you're you know you're, you're you're trying to do so although they may have not known of this particular information you know a, a lot mm -hmm. of them are quite fascinated um you know there may be aspects that you're t you know certainly if you have to tell the truth you have, <laughs> you have to tell the truth no matter what yeah, that's, that's right um but at the same time you're trying to do it in a way that the children can understand because you know they're learning one thing and you're coming in and telling them another thing so you have to be um a bit careful on how you you know how you put the information across so it's not confusing um mm -hmm. you know and sometimes the you know children can ask you all kind of different types of questions and fr completely throw you at times <laughs> uh, one example was and this is why i say the media is very very dangerous and as you know uh, uh one of our uh great prophets of re recent times marcus garvey said <clears throat> we have to fight propaganda with propaganda That's right. we have to fight negative mm. propaganda with our own positive uh propaganda why do i say that i remember going into a school and a young person um i was talking about imhotep the first um man of no the first um mm, polyglot uh, multi-genius <laughs> absolutely um and the young the uh, young man or uh, child at the time this was a white child by the way um mm -hmm. put his hands up and asked me a question and said but isn't was is wasn't imateb an evil man you know he was like a monster and so and i said well where did you where did you hear that where did you get that from he said i saw it in the film the mummy that's it thanks to hollywood so, absolutely so you know his first encounter and a lot of black children of course 
would be thinking the same same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you mentioned the name Imitate, they would want to run as far away from it as possible rather than running to it to find out more. But Hollywood, as you just said, has a way of shaping the mind. So even before you can get this information anywhere close to them, their minds are already being formed. Hence why we have to be very careful of these um, TV programs, these films and so forth. Um, that you allow your children to watch and so forth. It's fine they're watching it, but you need to have other information that you can challenge the things that are shown on the screen. And that's, and then your child will realise how um, their minds are being conditioned by, um, you know, media, be it electronic or paper media. So, yeah, your question, the hostility. So, generally though uh, being invited in you you'll often find um those that invite you in not so hostile mm-hmm. if you're trying to get into schools and you can't get in oftentimes <laughs> because they're off <laughs> right <laughs> um, some of them will you know say it's because of oh, they haven't got the budget this then the other but they often find the budget for other things yeah that's yeah, it. That's and it. That's it. yeah, and you know, just on that note, of you know, a lot of times when it comes to Black History Month, uh, many of our people that are working in the heritage area mm-hmm. are often asked to go into schools and do something with the schools and so forth. Mm-hmm. But oftentimes, they're asked to do these things for free, and certainly if you're you know if this the the field that you work in is heritage and that's a part mm-hmm. of how you make your living mm-hmm. then how can you possibly be doing things for free unless you're you've got some sort of funding or something from you know that's, that's right. somehow it's been mm-hmm. paid for you simply can't uh, 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 do it but mm-hmm. you know many of these schools i know a few may not have money but i i believe many do but it's where they value, where they place their value. That's it. And so I often say to people who are in that particular area, um, um, in the heritage area, be careful. Um, you know, if you're asked to do for things for free mm. and doing it for free because it... Many of the times, because it's not valued. And that's it. We're the only ones really that, that. Um, can make people start valuing our stuff and valuing who we are. That's right. As they say, right. well, if black lives really do matter, then our history and our value matters also. That's so, right. So, you know, matters. I don't want any of the lip service about such as right. show me it in reality. And now, uh, if yeah. Black History is one month of the year, and you you can't find a little budget to um, pay these people who spend days, months, years trying to piece yeah. this information together, put it yeah. into a palatable form, and come and present it to you, mm-hmm. and you want it for you know completely nothing. Um, you know, I don't think that's right, and I think people we really need to be careful in that area and we need to start placing value on the things mm-hmm. we have the things we do no, if we no, want no, other no. people to value it we have to value it first that's it 100 sure. percent agree 100 percent agree if they want it you pay for it in the same you way you, it. To, you know this you know the same thing yeah and the budget is there yeah because the reason why i asked about the hostility because i remember when my children um when they were children and there was a school they they had a particular there was um quite a few black teachers in their school funny enough and there was one particular one when black history month came about she made it a point to really promote and push black history month and we invite speakers in and to the extent that it's got really really popular and then they had a new because it's one of these academies you know these new academies yes and then till they had <laughs> I forgot what you call the people of Canada. Are they principals? You had a new principal and she was totally hostile towards it. Totally hostile. Within no time, 
she made sure she shut it down you know yeah, he, 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 and he, on the basis that well it's kind of divisive and it's racist because why are we just concentrating on black people when other people did you know it was totally turn it on his head and hostile and in the end managed to push it out the school and that's what i find a lot of schools are doing now they're actually anti-black history month and now trying to replace it with something else yeah it's um it's yeah it's quite unfortunate and you you do find that unfortunately again you find it amongst you know many european teachers but you find it unfortunately amongst some of our own uh, wow. teachers of african descent <laughs> um and you know they make it as i said the biggest excuse is there's no money there's no budget but they find a budget for these all these other things of course, you know, of I, course. I i watch them and i see what's going on mm. um and you know it can break your heart when when you when it's you know you can clearly see mm -hmm. that um the children will benefit from what you, oh. you know what you have to offer but children yet love it. They, yeah they put such an obstacle in yeah. front of it happening um yeah and you just have to ask yourself why 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 do well, you know, do this and that's when as we mentioned before there's a clear agenda because they deliberately concealed our history from us by telling us that africans as you know contributed nothing to civilization when they well know the bedrock of civilization is Africa and Africans. So we know that there was playing to an agenda. But as you mentioned before, when the literature now started to emerge, especially in the States, and even if we look way back, we can see things like J. Rogers, you know, even what Garvey was preaching and talking about, the information was, was known of but the problem was to get it into this institution and as you mentioned garby talked about propaganda they had the monopoly on that because they had the information on the lock and key so the vast majority of african people both in the diaspora and on the continent just did not have a clue what is going on so now it's about challenging that system and opening things up so our children and adults can find out their true worth and their true history which obviously your series of books has done tremendously well in doing that